This video is the fourth of a series titled Goresis Water Box Providing Solutions to World Problems. I'd like to suggest that you review the first three videos, part one, two, and three, before going on to this fourth video, part four. During this segment of the interview, I am prompting Peter to tell us how the water box and his Goresis planting technology are helping to solve world problems. He also talks about his latest project in Ecuador called Life, Water and Nature in Spanish, which just started in January of this year and which involves the cooperation of several substantial contributors and is expected to become a model for farmers in arid zones worldwide. Of late, the Inter-American Development Bank has also been getting interested in the venture. I will mention more at the end of the video and as always I have provided the links in the description section below the video. The pictures you see in this video were taken from the Ecuador project. For this fourth video I had planned to tell you a little bit more about the process and the perils of desertification. But I'll do that next time because on Friday last week Anthony Lake, the executive director of UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund was warning the world that quote, we are on the brink of a real disaster throughout the Sahel end quote. So I want to talk just a little about what's happening there and I'll tell you more about desertification in video 5. Since last year the Horn of Africa has been experiencing a tremendous humanitarian crisis. The region had been experiencing the worst drought in 60 years, which was a shocking reminder of the potentially devastating effects of human-created land degradation and desertification. According to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, or FAO, Ethiopia had lost 19% of its tree cover between 1990 and 2010. So in just 20 years, every fifth tree had been cut down. If the Horn of Africa isn't bad enough, a new crisis is looming across the Sahel. The entire length extending east-westward from south of the Sahara Desert to north of the savannah or steppe, comprising the following countries Senegal, Southern Mauritania, Mali, Burkina Faso, Southern Algeria, Niger, Northern Nigeria, Chad, Northern Cameroon, Sudan, and Eritrea. The United Nations and aid agencies warn of a new African famine and the UN has made an international appeal for 720 million US dollars for the Sahel countries. But no worries. Since we have been spending more than a hundred billion dollars a year in Afghanistan, which translates to about two billion dollars a week, Coughing up an additional three quarters of a bill should be a piece of cake, don't you think? Please forgive me for being sarcastic for a moment. If you don't believe me, look at the website costofwar.com, but be prepared to be shocked. The numbers are climbing up very fast. Oxfam International a grouping of 15 organizations working together to find lasting solutions to poverty and injustice said that it needs 38 million dollars to feed 1 million people most at risk. The organization warns of a West Africa drought catastrophe and states that urgent action is needed to stop an imminent humanitarian disaster affecting 13 million people. So, dear viewer, I want to kindly ask you to forgo one restaurant or movie visit in the coming weeks and donate the money you have saved as I have done 
although I'm not in the habit of eating out or going to the movies. I'm providing you with a page on the Oxfam website where I've made my donation. Thank you very much for doing this. And now on to Peter's interview. And now we're coming to, um, you know, this problem with, uh, you, you pointed that out, desertification um, and uh, the abuse, the erosion problem that goes with it, the abuse of nature through the establishment of monocultures um, and the destruction of biodiversity. And, and you are addressing these world problems. I mean, it's just amazing how your system um, addresses a number of the, the uh, greatest world problems, and they're all interrelated. There is interdependence. Um, you know, it's either a well or badly functioning system. Um, in my last YouTube video on my own channel, um, it's called uh, How to Alleviate uh, Pain and Suffering, and it's 7D, so it's the fourth video of that series. I address these worst global problems. And I think um, the, the real killers here are poverty and world hunger. Your system can be used effectively to combat all these problems because they're interrelated. So, so your major thrust now is, of course, the, the sequestering and the um, growing of, of trees, but it's, it's mainly also to provide a people a livelihood through um, uh, fruiting trees and bushes and vegetables on the ground. Um, so uh, can, you, can you address that? Because it, it's, just, it's at the center of, of the world problems. Yeah. Okay. Now, I think you give me a little bit too much honor. I, I do actually not address it, but actually trees or vegetation in general, so you talk about groups of trees, uh, vegetables, they can help us addressing the problems of hunger, of erosion, uh, uh, dust problems that we have in many places of the earth. Uh, the fact that water is not able to drown into the soil anymore because once soil is dry, it doesn't have its sponge function. So uh, what I do address is that I, I give people a technology to replant those trees. But what I do think in this is that over the last 2,000 years, we've always cut trees, always thought we can cut, 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 and they come back automatically. But once the trees are cut, many times there are animals a lot, uh, like uh, goats and sheep who uh, eat the saplings, so then the sun starts to touch the soil, the soil gets too dry, seeds don't germinate anymore, and then it changes into dust, and you have desert. I have calculated that we have about 2 billion hectares of man-made desert. I know it's very prevalent in the Mediterranean area, and I also know from my studies of world regional geography that um, the desertification is produced mainly by um, people's great need for an energy source. As you probably know, an estimated 1.5 billion people have no electricity whatsoever. So what do they need? use for uh, cooking is charcoal. And so they cut their, um, you know, forests and bushes and, and everything and destroy completely their environment. It would take a concerted effort um, to, to regain the environment, um, as you are doing, of course, with the water box. Um, so um, I think it, it's absolutely a man-made problem out of necessity, out of, you know, st I mean, if it, it's either you starve and you have nothing to eat and you're so poor, or you cut down the environment and damage the environment. So what is it going to be, right? What we need to say, too, uh, much of the uh, problems that we have are caused because of the needs of people. And I'm sure that uh, if we help them to solve that need, uh, problems will be less. So what I'm focusing on now is that uh, I try to teach people how to grow fuel, uh, to make charcoal, how to grow vegetables to have their own food. And uh, before, uh, in order to do that, they need a water bottle. So right. that costs money. Now the problem of poor people is they don't have finance. Yes. How can they finance that? And I have a very interesting project just past in Ecuador, in, in a very poor area, very dry. Peninsula from Palena, and I, I'd like to explain a, a little bit of that to your listeners. Uh, we have built a, a greenhouse where we grow vegetables. We train trainers in that greenhouse. We do that with the University of Santa Elena and with the biggest farmers corporation of Ecuador, 54,000 members. Now, the uh, objective that we have is 
after one year we have trained the trainers and then we are going to put training centers at all the 56 outlets of the cooperative. There we offer a training to the members of the cooperative. It's a theoretical and practical training. The theoretical training is made by the university, practical is what we are doing, what I'm doing there. And after one year, when a farmer has followed the course, or his wife, or even his children, but many times family owned company, then they are offered an exam. And if they pass that exam with good success, they are offered a finance. So, because they have no collateral, so it's the exam which is going to be the selection. Now, if they pass that, they can have a finance up to 20 to 30 thousand dollars, make their own greenhouse, start to produce their own food, their own fruit, and their own yogurt. And the solution that we have found is that we found private banks interested in doing finance, and we found the inter-American development bank interested in developing this finance model by being the guarantee to the private bank instead of the farm. Yes, you're talking about microloans, right? Yeah, and if this model is going to work, and I have to tell your uh, listeners, it is an experiment. We don't know it yet. We just started in January. It's a three-year experiment. Yes. But this is going to work. We have found a multiplication model which is we can do worldwide. Then we have found a multiplication model. There are 300 million small farmers worldwide. And, you know, if you calculate if each of them is able to plant five hectares of fruit trees, then we have solved the problem. Yes. So, uh, this experiment is very interesting, and I'm really very hopeful that's going to do. I wish you all the luck with it. We'll be uh, keeping our listeners posted every once in a while about the progress, especially of that program. Peter talked about his latest project in Ecuador called Agua, Vida y Naturaleza, or Water, Life and Nature, which involves the cooperation of several substantial contributors or partners and is expected to become a model for farmers in arid zones worldwide. Of late, the Inter-American Development Bank has also been getting interested in the venture. This project is supporting the reforestation and restoration of the ecosystem on the Santa Elena Peninsula and adjacent areas, which experienced severe droughts last year that led to hunger, poverty, migration, and basically to the economic collapse of the region. In several counties, a state of emergency had been declared. Humanitarian aid had to be given, and the Ministry of Agriculture had been providing veterinary supplies and food for the affected cattle. Santa Elena Peninsula is the westernmost point on mainland Ecuador and is considered a naturally dry area under normal circumstances. Peter's Ecuador project focuses therefore on farmers who 1. have insufficient access to fresh water to grow their crop, 2. do not have any savings or capital with which to invest, and 3. lack the knowledge and experience of growing highly productive crops. Apart from replanting severely disturbed land, the project will be providing the farmers with food security in the near future and with income from the sale of cash crop in the long term. The farmers will be receiving training and, after passing an exam, they will obtain the Goraces Technology Certificate, which will enable them to apply for capital. The graduates will themselves become trainers and they in turn will educate those farmers who could not participate in this first training program. The project is being funded by a private foundation from the Netherlands and has four partners. One of the project partners is the Guayaquil-based Farmers Credit Union with over 54,000 farmer members and 56 rural branches which will become the future training centers. The second partner in the project is the University of the Peninsula of Santa Elena. The third partner is Goraces Ecuador 
the country's water box distributor. Goresis Ecuador, in turn, was founded by two entrepreneurial families in the agricultural industry. One, the family Sansor, whose company is providing supplies to the agricultural sector, and two, the family Nevado, who owns a rose farm and who also grows organic roses whose edible paddles are sold to gourmet restaurants. The fourth partner in the initiate of the project is Peter's social environmental enterprise, Aqua Pro Holland. In a future session, I'll tell you a little bit about what I call C, S E E, social and environmental entrepreneurs or social and environmental entrepreneurship. For details regarding the Ecuadorian project, please refer to the links in the description section. Thank you for watching and let's all help to grow a tree or three. Adios.